It's a big world out there with plenty of things to do and places to explore. But it's a world with a lot of big problems to solve, like pollution and global warming. It's time we all work together to solve them. So where do we start? The first step is learning all that we can about the problems facing the Earth. And then figuring out ways to solve them. We call that exploring. Right now we're going to explore... Wind, wind power! power. Wind power is defined as the process of transforming the kinetic energy of the wind into electrical energy. And, if you think about it, wind is one of the most widespread, readily available, renewable natural resources on Earth. It's virtually everywhere, and it's free. And, interesting fact, wind power is actually derived from solar power. And the reason you would say it's using solar power is it's solar heat that makes the wind. As you may have learned already, it's the differential in solar heating of the land compared to the ocean causes the air to move, and moving air we call wind. So you have the solar concentration of heating up all of North America versus the Pacific Ocean is what's making the prevailing north and northwest winds across all of North America. Think about it. If the sun didn't heat the earth unevenly from one place to another, it wouldn't create air currents, and without air currents, there wouldn't be wind. So, why haven't we used wind turbines and the power of the wind to make electricity in the past? For more than a century now, it's simply been easier to burn fossil fuels, either oil, coal, or natural gas, to generate electricity. There was plenty of it under the ground, and it was easy to get. But fossil fuels are a non-renewable resource, which means they're nearly impossible to replace when they are used up, and they generate pollution when they are burned. As the world grew, the demand for electricity has grown as well. At the same time, a reliable supply of fossil fuel has become more difficult and expensive to find, and the atmosphere has become polluted. And since fossil fuels are used in almost everything we do, from shopping to riding in the car, you'll notice the cost of just about everything keeps going up as well. More than half of what we use in oil, we have to import from other places, some of which are not particularly friendly, really. So the more windmills we put in, the more we can use less oil or emissions or that kind of thing. Today, there's a need for a more eco-friendly, affordable, and renewable source of energy. They call that green power. And one source of green power is wind energy. Humans have been harnessing the power of the wind since the Chinese first invented the vertical access windmill 2,000 years ago. Originally, windmills were just used for pumping water or grinding grain, thus the name windmill, because they used the wind to mill or grind grains. By 1390, the Dutch had developed the horizontal access tower mill design, which featured rotor sails that could be turned into the wind to work more efficiently and furled to avoid damage during storms. Windmills were popular and efficient and were used all over the world well into the 19th century until the invention of the steam engine provided a more reliable source of power. But as yet, nobody had designed a windmill that could generate electricity. In 1888, an American inventor named Charles F. Brush built a large post mill style windmill in Cleveland, Ohio. Using a multiple bladed picket fence rotor and a large hinged tail, his was the very first windmill to incorporate a step up gearbox that turned an electric generator at 500 revolutions per minute. Brush's windmill produced only 12 kilowatts of power, but it worked for 20 years and demonstrated the possibilities of wind power electricity. Today, wind turbines are much larger and come in two basic designs. The egg beater style, vertical access turbine, and the much more common horizontal access, propeller style. The turbine is simple in its basic operation, but it is microprocessors, computers, load cells, aerodynamics, angle of attack to a half a degree. So it's really interesting that it can be so technically interesting and be a fundamentally good thing to be doing for the Earth and for the world that we all live in. 
Modern wind turbines are made up of four major components. A tower to support the rotor and drivetrain, a nacelle, an exclosure that usually contains a drivetrain, gearbox, and electrical generator, a rotor, or blades which convert the wind's energy into rotational, also called mechanical energy, and the electronic equipment needed to send electricity to the power grid. Inspired by the aerodynamics of airplane propellers and monoplane wings, rotor blades are usually made of fiberglass, reinforced polyester, or wood epoxy, and can measure as much as 295 feet from tip to tip. When mounted on top of a 300-foot tubular steel tower, a single windmill can reach over 400 feet in the air. They're, they're quite big. Uh, the nacelle blades, well over 200 tons. Uh, in size, but again the size is to get the swept area to slow down more air molecules to make more electricity more cost-effectively. Interestingly, technologically, three blades seems to just balance better than two. There's a physical reason for it, but three blades, they're shaped like airfoils. They can pitch to regulate the power. So each wind turbine is autonomous, meaning it controls itself. So when the wind is too strong, it will pitch the blades to reduce the power and keep the power at the right angle. So each one is regulating itself. The regulation of the power is done by sensors and, and onboard computer controls. So the sensors sense both how much wind speed is there and how much power is being made. It will then send a signal to motors and gears in the hub to pitch the blades to reduce the lift that reduces the turning force that reduces the energy. So it will go up to its maximum power and then it will just regulate itself there, sort of like cruise control in a car. So the wind turbine can point itself into the wind. Each windmill does that by itself. It has a sensor that senses the direction of the wind and it will turn itself so it's always facing the wind for maximum power. Wind turbines operate on a simple principle. The energy in the wind turns the blade around a rotor. The rotor is connected to a shaft which spins a generator to create electricity. Inside the nacelle are two main components, a gearbox that speeds up the rotation. The wind turbine will turn slowly, because it's so big. It'll turn about 15 revolutions per minute. But at 15 revolutions per minute, the tips are going about 150 miles an hour. So inside here, we have a gearbox that speeds up the rotation and a generator that makes the electricity. Out of the gearbox comes something rotating fast. We put magnets on that. So now we have rotating magnets. We just put wires next to it. The magnets go past the wires. Electricity flows in the wire. The wires go down the tower, under the ground, into the electric system, comes out at your house. All electric generators operate on the same principle. Magnets plus copper wire plus motion equals electric current. The only difference is a wind turbine does it through mechanical energy. Windmills don't use any water or produce steam. They don't burn fuel or create pollution. Three-bladed wind turbines are usually operated upwind, facing into the wind. They're designed to be pushed by the wind, not to push it. Compare a wind turbine to an electric fan. Electric fans create a breeze pushing air past them. Wind turbines do just the opposite. It's an interesting comparison, a wind turbine to a fan, because they kind of look similar, the wind turbine being much bigger. The basic difference is in energy flow. In a fan in your home, the electrical energy is being used to push the air. To move the air, you need energy, you take the energy and electricity. The wind turbine is the reciprocal, the moving air caused by solar energy and differential heating. The moving air causes the blades to move around, causes the generator to turn, makes electricity and pushes it back into the grid or into your wall. So it's, they work similarly, they're the reciprocal of each other. Wind turbines are usually grouped together in what are called wind power plants or wind farms. 
where the power they generate is gathered and sent to the electrical grid. To be effective, wind farms have to be located where there is wind, on top of mountains, near mountain passes, and in extremely flat areas where wind circulates freely. America is particularly rich in, in wind energy. The Great Plains, east of the Rockies, west of the Mississippi, Canada to Mexico, breezy most all of the time, partially because of the stationary high pressure area with descending air that fans out. In addition, areas like, say, the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic states where you have just over North America prevailing west to northwesterly wind and you have the Appalachian Mountains which are kind of folded and rounded but they're perpendicular to the wind flow. So wind on the tops of all of those ridges, very windy, lots of ridge lines can make a lot of electricity from Maine down to Virginia and the Carolinas. In addition in the west you'd have passes, mountain passes, and again air being like a fluid is going to seek the path of least resistance and so it spills through the mountain passes for instance to Hatchapi and Palm Springs in California where commercial wind really had its, its beginnings. Similar in the Pacific Northwest mountain passes the Columbia River Valley same kind of thing with the air spilling through so virtually every place in the in, in the US uh, has good wind potential for the various reasons. Wind energy offers many advantages, which explains why it's the fastest growing energy source in the world. But it also has drawbacks. Wind power can be unreliable. In many places, the wind just doesn't blow strong enough to make the wind turbines produce reliable electricity. And when they do work, they generally produce less electricity than the average coal or natural gas power plant. Building a wind turbine farm can be expensive, and not everybody wants a hundred windmills spinning in their neighborhood. You sometimes have collisions between the rotating blades and birds. Uh, that can be a factor. In the older days, some of the windmills were kind of noisy. Um, less so now. Uh, not, not much noise at all. In spite of the drawbacks, it's expected that more and more of our electricity will come from wind turbines in the future. There is work to be done for the next 50, 60 years as we transform the whole world from burning and therefore the emissions and we're running out of the fuel into making electricity from renewable energy that is sustainable and it's a place where, where, where we all can make a difference and make the world a better place. Think about that the next time you crank up the heater or air conditioner or turn on a light switch. There are many ways we can use our natural resources more wisely. There's still a lot more to learn about the world and what makes it go round. And it's never too late to explore. You might be surprised about all you can learn. Until next time, I'm Katrina. And I'm Christian. See ya. Out there exploring.